Today's video is going to be so freaking cool. We are going to be talking about TikTok viral makeup filters and a makeup technique, specifically low visual weight, medium contrast. I know those are like tag words right now in the TikTok beauty community. The point of this video is to kind of break those concepts, those makeup techniques down so you guys can understand them and apply them to your own makeup. I am a low visual weight with a medium contrast. And so what does that all mean? I'm going to explain it to you guys. I'm also gonna explain it in the tutorial while I'm doing my makeup. So if you wanna skip over to that, go ahead and skip to the makeup tutorial. I have timestamps, but I'm gonna explain it to you guys. And I'm gonna put the videos here, examples of what medium contrast looks like. There are examples and there's also a little slide showing the things that you should do in your makeup routine if you're someone with a medium contrast. It was a French makeup artist that made the filter and I think contrast thing, I'm not sure if she made it up, she probably did. Um, and it's just a way for her as a makeup artist to know how to do makeup for her clients and also help everyone around the world. So I'm gonna show you guys what mine looks like or what I look like in the contrast makeup filter and also with the low visual weight, high visual weight filter. <laughs> and then this is my color analysis filter, which I still don't know what my color analysis is, but I am a beige girl, certified beige girl. I made that series on TikTok for the girlies who are light to medium, neutral undertone like me. I can help you choose colors that are going to best suit your skin tone with lots of trial and error and practice for myself. I think what I learned from this as well is that soft glam is that girl when it comes to makeup styles. It's always going to make everyone just feel so pretty, feel their best and just really enhance your natural features. Like you're gonna wanna wake up in it every day once you learn how to do it. It's just gonna be like your go-to makeup because using these makeup techniques is going to make you feel your best, like guaranteed. Of course, makeup can be fun. There are makeup rules. There's different makeup styles. The makeup rules are there just as a guide. You don't have to follow them, but if you are looking for harmony and balance, which is what makeup is providing technically, the rules are there to help guide you to find that harmony and balance within your makeup so you just look like an enhanced version of yourself. So if that's what you're looking for, this is the video for you. You could find your signature style makeup, which I think is important for every woman to have. So with the low contrast, medium contrast, high contrast, it's basically comparing your hair, eyes, and your skin tone. For someone who is low contrast, there's not gonna be a lot of contrast within the hair color, the eye color, and the skin color. So Beyonce can is a good example when she dyes her hair the more caramel. It really, it this really makes her a low contrast. So I think you can change your contrast if you change your hair color because it is based off of your hair color compared to your skin tone and your overall features. The standout things to look for is your the contrast between your hair and your skin tone and also your eyes and your skin tone. So typically if you have a fair skin tone and you have light eyes, you are most likely going to be a low contrast person or even low to medium because your hair might be darker. So you're really just bridging the gap between the light colors on you and the darker colors on you. And so the question is, can this work for all skin tones? Absolutely. But what you're going to find is that the darker you get on the spectrum, the more likely you're going to be a low contrast. And that's because as your skin tone gets darker, it's not gonna be that much different from your hair color. So you won't find a lot of deeper skin tones being high contrast because there's not a lot of contrast between the skin and the hair and the eye color. And also, if you are low contrast, that means you don't have to wear a lot of makeup. <laughs> Honestly, you don't. And that's why women who have tan skin dark features, dark hair, are likely to look really pretty with no makeup and look kind of funny if they do wear a lot of makeup because it's just too much. It becomes clownish. They don't need all of that makeup for their features to pop. Just little things here and there, like a little bit of blush, a little bit of lip color, and that is it. But if you love to play with makeup, obviously you're gonna be a little bit sad about that. And then if you have a high contrast, 
You can wear a lot of makeup. You can wear those bold smoky eyes, the bold lips, because there's so there's not a lot of color on your face to balance out with your hair. So you have you can wear a lot more makeup, a lot more full glam makeup, and it's not gonna look as crazy on you as someone with a low contrast. And then us medium contrast girlies are right in the middle. We need just enough to kind of enhance our features. Now let's talk about low visual weight versus high visual weight. I feel like this is more of a Asian makeup technique. This is where I first saw it kind of popping up. And so what they, kind of measure is your facial features, the balance of your face. And instead of the balance of the color, it's more the balance of the size of your features. So for low contrast, so for low visual weight, you're going to have kind of, you're gonna have pretty even lip, nose, cheek, and eye size compared to your face as a whole versus high visual weight, you're gonna have like standout feature, either really big lips, really prominent cheekbones, really big eyes think model-esque a lot of times models are high visual weight because they have those really unique features that stand out on their face where so it almost looks kind of weird but beautiful in the same way um, it's just a very unique look and they can handle wearing more makeup more like crazy makeup and all of that because they have those standout features and so it the makeup doesn't overwhelm them like it would someone with everything that's a little bit smaller on their face like pictures of beyonce she showed as an example where she's wearing really heavy eye makeup a really bold lip all you see is the makeup before you see beyonce but when beyonce is wearing her monochromatic really light ethereal makeup you see beyonce you don't see the makeup first and that is the whole point the whole point of these is so you are wearing the makeup, the makeup isn't wearing you. So that's all that this is doing. It's helping you find that balance for yourself within your makeup. And then your color analysis is a whole nother thing. I don't wanna to touch on that too much because I don't truly know my own. Uh, I just know what looks good on me as a beige girl. So my biggest recommendation when it comes to colors and undertones like blushes and lipsticks is to find someone on the internet, there are so many makeup girlies, find someone who has a signature look. There's a lot of makeup girls who have signature looks. I have a signature look. And if you have a skin tone similar to them, the colors that you love on them are going to look good on you as well. So I always say that, find someone on the internet that has your skin type, your skin tone, your makeup style. These things are important because it can help you as a consumer buy products that you're going to love instead of just always being in the dark and buying things and hating them. You really have to find people who look like you and have similar features and attributes as you so you can make better purchases. I can't, I cannot say that enough. So I'm not like, just follow me, follow lots of people with a range of things that you have. You know, we all have different skin types and all of that. My beige girls, we don't all have the same skin type. So there's so many just different areas where you could pick and pull from different creators, which is the really cool thing about the internet. So if you wanna see how I accomplish this look using the makeup techniques on the viral makeup filters on TikTok, then Let's get into it. So I'm gonna start off with my eyebrows. This isn't anything super important, super crazy within this process, but you do want to put something in your brows because your brows frame your face. So I'm not gonna do anything too crazy. I'm just gonna put a little bit of brow gel tint through them. And this is from Milk Makeup. It's in the shade Herb, which is described as a medium brown. And I think that is perfect. The rule of thumb for your eyebrows for makeup is if you have darker hair, you wanna do your brows two shades lighter or the shade of your roots. Um, and then if you have lighter hair, you wanna go two shades darker with your brows. So that is just a rule of thumb for makeup, but you don't have to follow it, of course. Makeup is, you know, what you wanna do with it. So it really just depends. But the reason that there's rules in makeup is because Makeup wasn't always used as something fun and creative. I feel like it was meant to kind of just enhance your features and create harmony and balance, which is what these two viral makeup trends, filters, techniques 
are teaching you. We'll continue to talk about that throughout, plus, you know, makeup techniques. All right, so that is the brows done, and now I'm going to start working on the foundation. Obviously, you're gonna do your foundation, your foundation, your primer, all of that, your concealer. It doesn't really matter for these makeup techniques, so I'm just going to do my normal routine. This is e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. For foundation, I'm gonna go in with Smashbox Always On foundation. And I'm just gonna use the same brush. I'm just gonna put a light layer just to even out my skin tone. And then I'm gonna put on some bronzer now. And for medium contrast makeup, it does say to use bronzer, not contour. And I think it's the same for low visual weight makeup as well. It's just bronzer. You don't want anything that's going to be too harsh on the face or stand out too much. Bronzer is a little bit more soft looking than contour. So I'm using the Anastasia Beauty Balm in shade 12 and as you can see it's not that dark it's not that warm it's a really good shade for me just to give my skin a little bit of warmth and dimension the thing about the high contrast low contrast medium contrast is you're basically trying to bridge the gap between your skin and then your features like your eyes and your hair so you're trying to bridge the gap between the contrast of those so by adding bronzer we're deepening our skin tone a little bit, making the contrast gap smaller. And then I'm gonna go in with concealer and just brighten where I need to brighten, which is under the eyes and down the center of the face. Again, you don't wanna do anything too harsh when you have a low visual weight or medium contrast or even light contrast because we're creating balance. Just enough to give dimension so the face doesn't look flat or just one color. So this is the concealer, the foundation, the bronzer done. You can see it still looks pretty light, but I just overall got a little bit more color on my face. So it's bridging the gap between my skin and my hair color now. I'm going to contour my nose really lightly with a little bit of the Anastasia Beauty Balm. All right, now we're going to start doing a blush. And the blush, the whole purpose is to give the face a little bit of color, a little bit of life with blush. So you don't want to put too much blush. This kind of makeup requires just enough blush for a little bit of color on the face. So I'm going to go in with Milani Nude Kiss. And if you have watched my Beige Girl series on TikTok, I am a light to medium neutral undertone. So on the spectrum of skin tones, I'm in the light to medium. And my actual undertone for my overall face is neutral. And if you are the same, I can say with confidence that for blush shades, you should be choosing blushes that are described as corals, peaches, and mobs. Those are gonna fit your skin tone the best. You can do any color you want, but those colors specifically, blushes that are described that way, are going to make your skin tone pop the most. And also, they're going to look a little bit more subtle on your skin. They're not gonna be, it's not gonna look like clown colors on you. You know, sometimes when you use the wrong color blush or lipstick, it really, sticks out like a sore thumb on your face and there's like some type of balance that is off because it's not cohesive with your skin tone and your undertone and according to my research as a beige girl <laughs> and the creator of the beige girl series on tiktok corals mauves and sometimes peaches that lean a little bit more cool are the best for our skin tone during the cooler seasons I like to use more of a mauve color or a dusty rose color. Dusty, raw, dusty rose and mauve are very similar in blush. Sometimes dusty rose is a little bit lighter than mauve, but those are the descriptions that you're looking for. Coral, mauve, dusty rose, peach. Peach is a little bit more orange. Peach could be a little bit better for warmer undertones, but being a neutral undertone, I can get away with cool and warm, but there has to be a mix a balance between the two on my face in order for everything to look cohesive. So I'm using Milani Cheek Kiss in the shade Nude Kiss, which is a really pretty, everyday, all year round color. You see, it gives me just enough color on my face to kind of have my cheeks pop a little bit more. There is this blushing berry shade that Milani has in this blush and it just does not look good on my skin tone doesn't fit my undertones, does not look good. Can I wear it? Yes, if I want to. Does it look cohesive with me? Does it look 
harmonious with me? No. <laughs> so that's just an example of finding the right shades and colors and undertones for you to create that balance, that harmony in your makeup. Also understanding your color season is going to help you choose colors that are better suited for you as well. I don't officially know my color season. I'm between I'm between the cooler shades. I don't think I'm in autumn. I don't think I'm the warm tones, but I'm still not sure. I need to get that done so we can see it once and for all. But I wanted to wear black just so everything kind of, nothing was standing out too much. But I do feel like wearing black does make my features stand out more because I do have darker features, but I don't have that fair skin tone. So I'm just kind of setting the face now down the center. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do eyeshadow. This you can keep really simple. This is what I love about doing this is you can do very minimal steps makeup and it really is going to enhance your features because you're creating that balance in your makeup so i'm going to take this bronzer shade this is from siate london it's in the shade south beach this is a bronzer but it's way too warm for my own skin tone because i'm a neutral undertone it's just too it pulls too orange on me but for the eyes this is the perfect shade this is the only shade you need if you are a minimal eyeshadow girl it's just going to kind of give a little bit of depth and dimension on your eyes. What it's also doing is bridging the gap between the contrast of your eyes and your skin tone. So with a medium contrast, there's two things that we have to kind of bridge. You can wear just blush and lipstick and it will definitely balance out your face because adding that color just brings life back to the face, color back to the face and kind of lessens that gap between the skin and the hair. But for medium contrast, we typically have dark eyes. So we can handle eyeshadow as well. And brown eyeshadow is the best, especially a warm tone like this. It's gonna look so good against your dark toned eyes. I have brown eyes, but they're almost black. My mom used to call them olive eyes. So I'm just putting this bronzer in my crease. This also works really well for low visual weight. And the reason this works for the low visual weight trend is because with low visual weight, we tend to have features that are all the same in size on our face. So we don't have large eyes, we don't have large lips, we don't have very pronounced cheekbones. Everything is kind of the same size laid out on our face. So our eyes, nose, lips, cheeks, there's nothing very pronounced on the face. So you can create balance and harmony by doing a more monochromatic look and adding a little bit of color to the eyes, cheeks, and lips. And those colors have to kind of work together for your skin tone. Soft colors, this is where soft glam comes in and why it looks so good on so many people because it's really playing into that low visual weight, medium contrast. I don't have the statistics or anything, but I would guess that majority of people fall into medium contrast and low visual weight. Okay, so just a little bit of brown eyeshadow just to give life to the eyes and kind of balance out the color of the eye and the skin. You can see how that just adds life to the face. And then I'm going to add a little bit of eyeliner. For medium contrast skin tone, it says to use brown eyeliners. And this is something that I love. I feel like it fits my features so much better than using black. I use black when I wanna go full glam or I really want the eyeliner to stick out. But when I just wanna feel like myself and a little bit enhanced, brown eyeliner is the go-to for me. So it makes sense that this is suggested for medium contrast. And I also have a list for my beige girls of colors that work really well for our skin tone. And I think that's going to work perfectly for this makeup tutorial because these are colors that are going to fit you very easily. Seamlessly blend into your overall look. If you're a beige girl like me that's light to medium neutral undertone, I kind of have a lot of it figured out for us and I have a list with links. So I'm gonna put that in the description for you guys. And I'm constantly adding to it when I find new favorites. I did not mean for my wings to be this big at all. I don't remember the last time I've done this, but here we are. So brown eyeliner is better. You don't have to make it this intense or big, preferably not. <laughs> 
and then it says a little bit of a little bit of shimmer on the inner corner but i'm actually going to put it on the center of my lid this is the same for low visual makeup they always do a little bit of shimmer on the eyelid just to make the eyes pop a little bit more because the shimmer brings light to the eyes which is automatically going to draw people to them so i'm using a little bit of Urban Decay Space Cowboy. And now we're gonna put on some mascara and I feel like there might be some debate between brown mascara and black mascara, but black mascara is going to be better for medium contrast because again, the dark eyes are gonna require a darker mascara. I have tried brown mascara and it just never looks good on me. I don't think it's because I haven't found the right brown. I think it's because it's not dark enough for my eyes. So my eyes are darker than the mascara every single time. And I need something that's going to help balance that a little bit. So I'm gonna put a good amount of mascara on. And these are the eyes pretty much done. I am going to add a little bit more blush. One, because I want to set the blush with powder, but two, as someone with a low visual weight, you can afford to put a little bit more blush. Blush is something that you can go a little bit heavier on. And I feel like that makes so much sense for me because I don't really like doing a bold lip that much. And I also don't like going very dark on my eyes, but one thing I do love and feel looks pretty balanced on me even if I wear a lot is blush. The blush I'm going to use is this one from Too Faced. It's in the shade Velvet Crush, which again is described as a nude pink. So it sounds like nude, nude pink is a good shade for us as well. So I like to go a little heavy with the blush because I love blush and because I feel like my face can handle it. And blush is the first thing to fade when it comes to your makeup. And because I'm a full glam girl, I'm going to put a little bit more powder under my eyes. I'm gonna use a brightening powder. This is in Candy from Kosas and it comes out a little bit more as like a peachy pink. It's nothing too bright, too crazy. It just kind of double sets my under eyes and gives me a little bit of that brightness through the color correcting shade of pink. Pink is going to automatically brighten under the eyes. And it works well for me because I have a neutral undertone, but I don't like my concealer to be neutral undertone. That's like a conversation for another video. But I do prefer something that's peachy or like a cool pink because it adds that brightness factor. So I love using brightening powders under the eyes. And that's the only place that I'm going to put this. To the lips. So I do have smaller lips. When I don't have my makeup on, it's not like they're extra small or anything. But now that I have my makeup on, my eyes are enhanced with a little bit of color. My cheeks are enhanced. So I do like to enhance my lips by overlining a little bit. And I'm gonna use two shades to do that. I'm gonna use Anastasia Deep Taupe and Cool Brown. I like to think of these as bronzer and contour for my lips to give them a more full effect. Going in with Deep Taupe first. This is the more cool tone of the two on me. I'm gonna focus on overlining the center of the top and bottom lip. And trying to stick with my natural shape for the rest of it. Nothing too crazy. I'm gonna go in with cool brown, which is more like the bronzer. And even just looking at my lips now with no product on them, you can see they are naturally very pink. They have a lot of color to them. And as a beige girl, my suggestion when you're choosing lipstick, when you want to go with medium contrast, low visual makeup, you wanna choose something with a little bit of color. Don't go too dark, don't go brown, don't go red, and also don't go nude. It, it does create a disharmony in the face if you go nude, because obviously you're kind of taking away the color from this part of the face, while the rest of the face now has color. So when we're doing our makeup to be more balanced and harmonious, you wanna pick a shade that has a little bit of color think the my lip but better type of color and for me personally those lipsticks that happen to be the best are mauve lipsticks and warm peach those will always be the best bet for my skin tone and you if you are similar this is one of my favorite lipsticks of all time i feel like it's just the perfect color for me it just it always looks good. And this is the shade Maison by Merit, and it is described as a mauve color. So I'm gonna put this on.
And now you see that there is balance to the face after adding that color. It just added something to the face. It added color, it added balance. It's so crazy how all of this works. And this is why I have a signature look, which is basically this, and it just always makes me feel my best. I just feel like it looks like a put together version of myself. It is a little bit more full glam. So that is the power of makeup. That is the transformation that makeup can give you when done correctly, according to all of these things, your color analysis, your visual weight, your contrast it is so crazy i'm gonna put a little bit of bottom mascara to just balance out my eyes this also explains why i don't really like a lot of eyeshadow underneath my eye because i have a medium contrast i feel like high contrast people can afford to put more like bottom liner or eyeshadow and it looks good or if you have really big eyes you can really handle a lot more makeup on the eye but I don't have large eyes. I think too much darkness on my eyes always makes my eyes look smaller and just not very good in my personal opinion. So mascara is enough for me personally and I will always stick to that. All right, let's take the hair down so we can get the full picture. Alrighty, and this is with my hair down and you can see that it doesn't look like too much makeup I feel like for some people watching this tutorial you might think this is totally soft glam this is full glam it's not everyday makeup but honestly this is makeup that makes me look my best and enhances all of my features and makes me look very balanced and I think it looks really good I think I could wear this every single day and feel my best to be honest I feel very I feel like everything is exactly how I like it. This is how I like my makeup to be. Anytime I'm going out somewhere, anytime I'm taking pictures or anything, this is the makeup that I feel that I look the best in and it's because it is working with me, not against me. And that is the point of all of these TikTok viral makeup filters, makeup techniques. They really do help you find makeup that makes you look your best. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you guys learned from something from this. And of course, don't forget, makeup is whatever you want it to be. It can be fun. You don't have to follow these rules. But if you are looking for a signature makeup look or makeup that just makes you feel your best, following this makeup tutorial will help you so much to achieve that look that you could be looking for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this makeup tutorial and I will see you guys next time. Bye.